Hey, what's up kiddos? Here is your uh, math homework that is paired with your daily CCR number seven. Uh, you can see it's tables number five. So we're gonna go straight to the back. Uh, the last two problems are what will be recorded for you to check if you want. Uh, and then hopefully if you are absent today, uh, that you can use this information to help you work on the other problems. Uh, so anyway, now our first step is to circle from input to output. So in the machine goes a three and out comes a six. Uh, at that point, we want to notice, does it go up or down the numbers from three to six? So it goes up and we know if it goes up, that means it could be the operation of addition or multiplication, only one of the two. All right, so now we need to decide which one is it, addition or multiplication. So I want you to start asking yourself all the time, does three times something equal 36? Does two times something equal four? Does nine times something equal 18? Does four times something equal 32? Does two times something equal 16? If it does, then you know that they are factor type problems uh, and that that means it has to be multiplication or division if it's going down. All right, so since we know that three times something does equal six, uh, the rule must be multiplication, right? And this spot right here is where the rule is. Three goes in, a rule happens times something, and then that pops out. So I can actually just write three times blank equals six. That way it matches this, okay? Uh, same thing down here. We can sort of do these at the same time. Circle input to output. From 4 to 32, it's going up, which again means add or multiply. Right here is my rule. So same type of thing. Does 4 times something equal 32? Does 2 times something equal 16? Yeah. So I'm going to write 4 times something equals 32. Okay, so you can see the similarities. I'm doing both at the same time so you can uh, see the connection of the two. All right, so... You can do three times something equals six, and maybe you just know what the number is. You go, oh, I know what number goes there, and so you write it in, okay? Or let's say you don't, we can do the inverse operation, which would be six divided by three equals blank. The inverse operations mean we do the opposite operation to find a missing number. All right, so you could solve that and know that the rule is times two. So we can put that in there. Down here, four door times what equals dirty U32? Maybe you just know. What do you do if you don't know? You can do the inverse. 32 divided by four equals, and it'll tell us the rule number. Okay, so we know door times skate. So that rule is times eight. Okay. All right, so. At this point now, you know the rule. Now we want to actually find uh, what number goes in this missing spot. So we circle what we know. Wherever it is, that's where we're going to put it over here. So we have 8 times 2 equals 16. So it's going to go in the output spot of the table. And we're done. Okay, Down here. 4 times 8 equals 32. Circle what we know, since we know the rule is times 8 now. Okay, 3 is on the top, so it goes right here. 3 tree times skate, dentity floor 24. So we put it in the output of the table. Uh, if we knew this number, okay, let's say they gave us, uh, I don't know, let's say they only gave us 64. We'd have to go backwards and do the division inverse to go back up. But we got lucky and they gave us the input, which is nice. All right, so just for kids who are absent, um, I'm going to go ahead to, uh, let's go ahead and look at problem number two for those of you who are absent. So circle input to output. Is it going up or down? I can see it's going down for real, which means subtraction or division. And now we're wondering, is it this division? Do, are these factors? So 5 times what 
equals 40? Does 5 times something equal 40? Does 8 times something equal 64? Does 2 times something equal 16? If your answer is yes, then you know it's a division problem. Okay? So we're going to put division as our rule. All right, now, same thing. We can do a test problem. 40 divided by blank. That's the rule spot right here. And there's nothing there right now. Equals, and what pops out? A 5. So you can either just put the number in if you know it, 5 times what equals 40, or the cool thing about division is we're allowed to swap these numbers out because of the commutative property of multiplication, that flipping the numbers around. So we can actually do 40 divided by 5 equals and just get our answer, which is 8. Okay, So we know we're dividing by 8. Uh, for this table. So circle what we know, put it on the side it goes. So here's equal 4, this side is blank, and so now we have blank divided by 8 equals 4. Well that doesn't really help me too much, so we can go backwards and do the inverse operation. 4 times 8 equals, and we know it's 30u32. So we can put that in there. Okay. Alright, so something you need to see. In all of these methods, after we did the test problem, we ended up just doing this big number divided by the small number, and it told us the rule. 64 divided by 8, and it told us the rule. Because the original problem, 40 divided by what equals 5, we're allowed to swap those around. So that's something to be aware of, is how to find the rule number, is you can just do 40 divided by 5 and get the answer. 64 divided by 8, and it'll tell you the missing spot. Okay, same thing on the back. You can see 3 times what equals 6. We ended up just doing 6 divided by 3, and it told us this rule number. 4 times what equals 32. We ended up just doing the big number divided by the small number, and it told us the rule number. So that's something just to be aware of um, as you're figuring out what method you want to use to solve for the rule number.